This episode of Two and a Half Geeks brought to you by Data Robotics Drobo. You may be familiar with Drobo for the small office, home office user, but check out drobo.com slash business for simple, sophisticated storage solutions for the enterprise. Coming up on Two and a Half Geeks, we're going to be talking about iPad 2, AMD's new monstrous graphics card. Intel has some new toys and a whole lot more. The bar has been set wicked fast. It rocked in the benchmarks. We're going to up the ante uh, a little bit. Processing power. Maybe. I kind of understand this. Okay. Welcome to Two and a Half Geeks. I'm Aya Zaktar alongside Dave Altavilla and Marco Chepetta. How are you guys doing? Great. Doing awesome. Great. Awesome. Great. That's interesting because in the first take, you guys were just okay. Now you guys are awesome. All right. Well, yeah, watching, you, watching you make, make mistakes makes me very happy. Yeah. Right. You know, you're, you're such a pal. Let's, let's start with you, Chapetta. Let's sure. Start, let's give Dave a break. Let's talk about AMD's HD 6990. Now, I've seen this graphics card just kind of like with a white background. It looks like every other graphics card to me, but uh, that might be wrong. Right, Marco? Yeah. So, I mean, it, it looks like every other graphics card in the sense that it has a fan and a heat sink and some outputs. But when you compare this uh, foot-long beast to say like a mainstream card like this one, <laughs> you kind of get a sense of scale and uh, how big this baby is. So yeah, this puppy is the, the new top of the line from AMD. Uh, as you mentioned, the Radeon HD 6990. You're looking at a pair of uh, Cayman class GPUs on here, four DisplayPort outputs, dual link DVI output, giant fan in the middle, um, you know, cooling these two big heat sinks, and there's four gigs of RAM on board. You're basically looking at two Radeon HD 6970s on a single card. That card is actually causing interference with your microphone. Yes. Really? Yeah, like crazy interference. When you bring it up, it has so much power that it is <laughs> overwhelming. I'm not even Spatial kidding. Spatial distortion. Yeah, man. Yikes. It has, it has a gravitational field around it. It's so Unbelievable. big. Unbelievable. Now, that thing is like what? Only in a very affordable, I think, $700, right? Right. $699. But, you know, there's, there's caveats with this thing. Performance is, is stellar, as you probably expect. You know, two of the fast, some of the fastest GPUs on a single card. It performs basically twice as fast as a 6970. But it's got, you know, monstrous power requirements, too. Requires two 8-pin uh, PCI Express power connectors. And it also has an overclocking switch on it. So when it's in the standard, uh, standard mode, it, it's within power spec for those PCIe cables and the PCI Express expansion slot. But when you overclock it, it'll actually draw more power... Um, than the spec has designated. So you, you really need a high-end power supply, something designed for enthusiasts, you know, designed for overclockers to make sure this thing stays stable when you're running at the highest speeds. So this is not for the weak of heart or noobs. Forget it. No, absolutely not. You, you have to know what you're getting the into. lights dim. $700. <laughs> you could buy like a whole PC for that. A nice one, too, but it, actually. But it won't game as good as this thing. <laughs> Put it down. The interference is unbelievable. I can't believe that thing is actually... It has like a magnetic field, apparently. <laughs> Dave, let's talk about Intel's new Intel Core i7 990X Extreme. Now, what makes Ex it extreme? Extreme edition. Other than yeah, the man. Extreme. Well, <laughs> to go with your extreme graphics cards that uh, causes interference in your mic, uh, yeah, this, this would be the processor to have uh, if that's what you were going to do. The, uh, the Intel Core i7 990X Extreme Edition is uh, their latest speed bump, if you will for the Core i7 6-core series of chips. And this takes the clock speed of the processor up to a paltry 3.45 gigahertz with turbo boost capability up to 3.73 gigahertz. No joke, serious performance. Now, how do you activate this turbo boost mode? Is there like a button? Yeah, yeah, that's what it's it's kind of like the easy button you get at Staples. You just stick it on your desk and slam that sucker and Wireless, it goes. I like it. No, but seriously. <laughs> <laughs> no. No, it doesn't do that. Um actually, yeah, it's it's Intel's uh Intel's technology uh turbo boost is what it's called and it's uh dynamic clock gating on the fly uh based on workload that the chip sees. So, uh depending on how many threads you have active, uh you know, a couple of cores or perhaps the entire chip will boost up uh, a couple of uh, speed bins beyond the default clock speed of 3.45 gigahertz. In this case, the top end uh, turbo boost speed for you know that momentary bur burst of performance that you might need is 3.73 gigahertz. And um, 
So no joke, it's uh, a little bit faster than the previous gen Core i7-990X, which, or excuse me, 980X, which uh, clocked in at 3.33 gigahertz with a 3.6 gig turbo boost speed. Uh, just a little bit faster, obviously, at that 3.73 for the 990X versus the 980, but hey, we'll take it, you know, uh, upgrades are good. Now, Marco, Intel's got something else, an SSD that they are actually marketing under the Intel brand, which I think right. is actually unusual. Don't they just usually just send out processors and things? What, what's the story behind the Intel SSD 510 series? Sure. So it's actually, uh, it's, it's not new for Intel. They, they launched the X25M series a couple of years back. Oh, I didn't know. That was the first Intel branded SSD. Um, that was followed up by the second gen, which had, mm. you know, newer flash memory and a slightly beefed up sequential writes. Now, this baby here is the new 510 series. What's interesting with this drive is that it's actually not using an Intel controller. There is a, a Marvell a SATA 3 controller on this, on this SSD paired to Intel flash memory. But the, the actual controller that's you know, interfacing with the, with, with the SATA interface is, is not made by Intel. Is there a particular reason why they went to another company? Does Marvel actually do, or Marvell do a better job? I mean, is, what's the deal with that? Um, you know, it's interesting. We, Intel answered that question for us in the article, and the gist of their answer was they made their own controller for the first gen of drives because there were no controllers that met their performance needs. Um, now there's been so much competition in this space and there's been so much advancement that there are third-party controllers that offer performance at the levels that you know, they require, so they just went with a third party. Now, with that said, even though it's not an Intel controller, the drive has a firmware that's you know, completely modified by Intel. It's going through Intel's quality control, you know, which is second to none. So compatibility and reliability you know, shouldn't be an issue, even though the chip's not made by Intel. But you know, the, the, the controller came from a third party. Interesting stuff. So how was the, <laughs> the performance was all right? I would assume it's... Yeah, performance was very good. Now, unfortunately, OCZ launched, well, showed us the Vertex 3 a few weeks before this. And at this point, based on what we've seen, the Vertex 3 seems like the fastest uh, next-gen uh, SSD that's coming out. This trailed it, um, especially in writes, in sequential reads, it was right there. In random reads and writes, um, it couldn't match the Vertex 3 at all. It's good, but it couldn't match uh, the, the Sandforce-driven Vertex drive. Let's start talking about iPads, because <laughs> why not? Let's talk about the iPad 2 was, uh, I guess, announced last week should be available by the time you're watching this today. So go out there if you feel like standing in a line, you can check out the iPad too. Now, now there's an article uh, on Hot Hardware wondering, was the reality distortion field in effect during the iPad 2 event? Dave, what did you think? Yeah, we actually uh, picked up on Seth Weintraub uh, of Fortune Magazine's uh, view of Steve Jobs' uh, keynote, if you will, or introduction of the iPad 2 the other day at the, uh, at the Apple event. And uh, the reality distortion filter, or RDF, if you like acronyms, uh, definitely seemed to have kicked into gear a little bit. Because uh, Steve, who, you know, by the way, the guy's a, uh, he's a visionary, he's a gifted, you know, uh, amazing individual, no question about it. I, I just think the marketing guy that wrote his little talk was really expecting folks to drink deep on the Kool-Aid because some of these things were way off base. Um, first, one of the statements that was made that is the iPad 2 is the first dual core tablet to hit the market in volume. Not true at all. Sorry. Uh, NVIDIA's Tegra 2 processor we know, and if you've been watching Hot Hardware, you know, uh, has been out for many months now. And as a matter of fact, I looked at the, uh, the ViewSonic G tablet, which has the dual core NVIDIA Tegra 2, 1 gigahertz Tegra 2, under the hood, and uh, that thing's been shipping in volume. Um, certainly the Motorola Zooms bit out there as well. Again, these aren't shipping in iPad volume, okay, because God knows they're going to sell a ton of those things. Um, but they're out in volume. Volume production and this, you know, NVIDIA's chip has been out there. So that's just plain wrong. Um, and, you know, the list kind of goes on. Uh, they also had Steve quoting uh, a Samsung VP. Uh, as you heard, the selling was quite aggressive. This is re in relation to uh, Samsung's Galaxy Tab. Uh, the selling was quite aggressive, around 2 million units. In terms of sellout, we believe it to be quite small. Well, actually, the statement wasn't small. It was lost in the translation. I don't know if it was Korean translation or what have you. 
but um, for Samsung, but the selling was was quite smooth. Was what was said, not small, smooth. <laughs> so <laughs> the sell the sell into their channel partners was two million units. The sell out to end customers, he said, was quite smooth. So. You know, obviously, there's a little bit of marketing going on here in Apple, and I guess that's not uh, unique to you know many major manufacturers. No, I, I did see that. Not the the there was enough weasel words. I thought with the in volume thing that maybe is is possibly true. I don't know about that one. The translation thing. If you actually read the entire quote after the whole small smooth issue, mm. the the, uh, the person talking actually is talking about effectively lackluster sales. So while the quote may have been wrong, see, I've been reading up. Well, the quote yeah. may have been wrong. The effect is pretty much the same. But, but then again, uh, they always get their, their little jabs at everybody. Marco, what did you think about the presentation? You know, I thought the presentation was good, but, you know, if you've been in this business long enough, you, you kind of go into a keynote or go into a launch expecting the marketing hype to be, you know, cranked to 11. And you kind of know that a lot of those, uh, you know, grandiose statements, you got to take them with a, a little bit of a grain of salt. Yeah, yeah. Just, you and can go we, back to like when Verizon goes ahead, they used to have these big press conferences, even at CES, saying how happy they were to have all the phones they wanted and they didn't need the iPhone. <laughs> You're going to say a whole bunch of things, you know, right. to, to fit the whole space. Should we talk about a contest winner? Right? Sure. I think we should, Marco. You! Yeah, man, we finally, finally picked the contest winner for the, the chilling with the HH community sweepstakes. Our man, Cool Ice. Um, who's actually from up north. I think it's our first Canadian winner. Ice, walking ice away with the system. I still <laughs> haven't built it. Um, it's going to be a few more days before it's built and tested and shipped. But we finally have a winner. It's, uh, it's good stuff. The contest was open to Canadians? It I, was, uh, yes, hey. U.S. and Canada. <laughs> I can't believe such a thing. <laughs> oh, you're making me hold back the jokes, I guess. I cannot you know? <laughs> believe this. Wait, wait until customs get a hold of this thing. My goodness. Yeah, he's like, why, is it, why is it so the, neat? Why is the cabling so neat? They must be hiding stuff. They're going to rip it apart, Marco. <laughs> He's going to open it up, and there's going to be like an Amiga in the box. You know? There you go. There and you don't go. forget to ship with it you know, a nice big thing of flour inside a nice you know, piece of clear plastic. Oh, yeah, I'll, I'll love wrap that. It, I'll, and I'll wrap it in coffee. Wrap it in the computer, though. So <laughs> what could possibly go wrong, right? It's partly for exactly. baking. Now, Dave, I so, know you... you know, Oh, well, hold on. With, with that said, now that that contest is out of the way, uh, obviously we are working on the next one. We do not have details yet, but we will be giving away another gaming system soon enough. So keep coming by and keep an eye out for the announcement. We're lining up some friends. Uh, well, I, I was talking to the folks at NVIDIA, so who knows? We may see something from them. Yeah. Gonna hand, I think that I'm going to guess, and since we haven't talked about this, this could be totally right or totally wrong. I think that Marco is going to ship out Lots and lots of Tegra One processors. <laughs> that's what she's gonna do with all the excess. That's what, that's the prize. They can't all I be think, great. I think yeah, we're gonna make we're gonna make a machine too much. <laughs> we're gonna make a, a boatload of Tegra One keychains. Tegra One keychains. You'll make we'll make a case out of Tegra Ones because nobody uses them. <laughs> uh, that's not very nice, especially since Nvidia is gonna be helping out with the gaming rig. That probably will. Well, be. you know, we kind of expect the negativity out of you at this point. Oh, <laughs> gee, thanks. He's a grouchy man. You know what? Maybe we should check out Hot Hardware around the web. You know, it's available yes. everywhere, like at dig.com slash hot hardware. Maybe even facebook.com slash hot hardware. Twitter.com slash hot hardware. And on YouTube, youtube.com slash hot hardware vids. True. Or yeah. there's always this place called hothardware.com where you can enter contests. You can even read about the stories we talked about on this show and other stories that just can't fit on this program. Don't forget, there's a lot of, lot of great content on there. Yes. And uh, even though Dave writes some of it, you know, the, the, re the rest of it's very good, i got to say. Oh, nice. <laughs> Love you, man. Love you, baby. <laughs> well, we got to go off on a negative note. And we will see everybody next week. Thanks for stopping by. Aha, I ripped your line off. <laughs>